growing up in the 1990s meant surfing the internet on those AOL discs, watching The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Saved by the Bell, and playing Goldeneye on the Nintendo 64. And when it came to snacking, it meant having some of the greatest choices ever known to human children, if, that is, you could convince your parents to buy them. So today, we're unwrapping some 90s snack foods we want back. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food Channel. And after that, please leave a comment and let us know what other forgotten foods you would like to hear about. Okay, somebody throw on some Oasis. Released in 1990, Nestle's push-up pops were basically just sherbet in a cardboard tube that came equipped with something akin to a built-in plunger, which was used to push the sherbet up. And they were yabba-dabba delicious, by which we mean they were bedazzled with Flintstones characters. Flintstones push-ups seemed to disappear from the shelves at the end of the decade, but in reality, Nestle had simply ended its branding deal with the cartoon's producers. Push-ups are actually still out there in your grocer's freezer just without Fred's smiling face on them. First released in 1988, Hubba Bubba Bubble Tape, a variation on the Hubba Bubba Gum brand, exploded in the 1990s. Uh, not literally. It just got really popular. Apparently, kids were really into measuring things. But whatever the reason, the popularity of Bubble Tape was probably more related to its famous marketing campaign, which told kids, It's six feet of bubble gum for you, not them. Them, in this case, is meant to refer to adults. So the slogan was basically saying, this gum is going to piss off your parents. It worked like the Pied Piper's flute, and the manufacturer found themselves making a million packages of the stuff a week at the height of its popularity. Although the idea of so-called fruit leather actually goes back at least back to the turn of the 20th century, General Mills didn't introduce the world to fruit roll-ups until 1983. Once they did, though, the snack, which was basically just fruit-flavored corn syrup dried in a flat circular shape on a piece of cellophane, could quickly be found in almost every supermarket in America. For a brief time, between 1994 and 1996, General Mills partnered up with Nickelodeon to make fruit roll-ups that were branded with animated characters from shows like Doug, Rocco Modern Life and Ah! Real Monsters. There was even a limited edition slimy, grimy green flavor celebrating the network's infamous green slime. The end result looked like chowing down on a square of Shrek's pelt. Who wouldn't want to eat that? Manufactured by the Topps Company, who have primarily made baseball cards packaged with inedible gum for most of human history, Push Pops were a staple snack of 90s kids. Housed in a plastic tube that had a plunger-like device allowing consumers to push the treat up as they ate it, Push Pops were fairly similar to Nestle's Push Ups, although Topps apparently couldn't snack an endorsement from Fled Flintstone. But if Push Pops were your jam, we're happy to report you can still get them in many of their classic flavors. The hyperactive brainchild of General Mills, Squeeze-Its were a juice-like drink that came in a plastic bottle, and in order to drink it, you had to, well, squeeze it. Although they were actually introduced in the 1980s, Squeeze-Its rose to popularity in the 90s, thanks to a weird series of commercials in which kids chased down terrified, anthropomorphized Squeeze-It bottles to drink their delicious innards. The commercial ends with the encouraging slogan, Squeeze the fun out of it, which presumably hit the ears of every Squeeze-It bottle like a terrifying prophecy. Squeeze-Its came in flavors like Chucklin Cherry, Rockin' Red Puncher, and Smarty Arty Orange. But the big squeeze came to an end when they were discontinued in 1991. Brought to you by the same people who brought you fruit roll-ups, Shark Bites first swam onto supermarket shelves in 1988. Shark Bites were famous for their so-called special pieces. Some packages included rare alternate shapes like Great Whites, Shark's Teeth, or Tiger Sharks because it's never too early to start teaching kids about gambling. The whole thing worked so well, the company released a companion snack called Berry Bears, aimed at girls who, for some reason, they assumed didn't like sharks. Shark bites are still out there today, but ye be warned, their flavors are vastly different. Hubba Bubba Ouch Bubblegum was sold in tin containers that were made to resemble Band-Aid boxes, for that weird kid in class who liked to eat Band-Aids. Also, each individual stick of gum was wrapped in paper, like a Band-Aid, to complete the illusion. And like actual Band-Aids, the gum was sugar-free. But unlike actual Band-Aids, it came in flavors like grape, watermelon, sugar, and bubble. If this was one of your favorites, however, we're sorry to report the bizarre gum was discontinued in the late 2000s. 
Lunchables were brought to you by Oscar Mayer, the first and last name in bologna, and first hit supermarket shelves in 1988, going nationwide in 1989. Conceived as a way to sell more bologna and marketed as a way to help moms save time making lunch, Lunchables were a massive hit. They sold over 1.5 billion units in their first decade and proliferated into a variety of flavors, including the now legendary pizza. Introduced in 96, Pizza Lunchables were little snack packs that came with a small piece of crust, some sugary tomato sauce, three slices of pepperoni, some mozzarella cheese, and a cool red wand to spread the sauce. The wand is long gone, but otherwise, Pizza Lunchables are still available. Though they were created in Taiwan as early as 1975, Warheads weren't imported to the United States until 1993. It makes sense that the candy king of schoolyard legend would have a vague backstory like Rambo. Flavored with citric and malic acid, they have a pronounced sour taste. The flavor's intensity fades after 5 to 10 seconds, but most people had already spat them out by then. Despite, or more likely because of, a warning on the package that read, eating multiple pieces within a short time period may cause a temporary irritation to sensitive tongues and mouths. 90s kids would often hold contests to see who could eat the most warheads at once. If you were one of those kids, we recommend getting back in fighting shape, because warheads are still around today. Debuting on supermarket shelves in 1990, Kid Cuisine was a line of frozen dinners made exclusively for kids, which you could instantly tell because there was a cool-ass penguin wearing sunglasses right on the front of every package. The idea was basically to combine frozen foods and McDonald's Happy Meals for a Voltron of nutrition aimed squarely at latchkey kids. The TV dinner-like meals usually came with portions of kid-friendly meals like chicken nuggets and mac and cheese, and as the brand became more popular, new varieties like Pizza Painter Cheese Pizza and Rock and Roll taco roll-ups were released. However, today you can only get three kinds, popcorn chicken, mini corn dogs, and all-star nuggets. They all come with a brownie, corn, and fries, or a mac and cheese, if you're looking to recreate a weekday afternoon in the 90s. Kids like to play with their food. It's one of the immutable laws of the universe put forth by Isaac Newton. General Mills sought to capitalize on that universal truth by releasing Fruit String Thing, which comes from the same general fruit goop family of snack foods that include fruit roll-ups and shark bites. This time, the mixture was poured onto a paper backing in ropey tangles and swirls that kids could peel off the card as a single long strand or in bits and pieces. In fact, commercials for String Thing emphasize the creativity inherent in choosing how to eat one. While the standard form resembled string, the product also came in designs like rocket ships and bicycles, for kids with less imagination. But to the disappointment of kids everywhere, the product was discontinued sometime in the mid-2000s. Nestle's Butterfinger is a chocolate bar with a weird, flaky orange, peanut butter flavored filling that, believe it or not, has been around since 1922. When a product is a 70 year bestseller, you don't mess with the recipe, but you do try a spin off. So in 1992, Nestle rolled out Butterfinger BBs. Introduced to the world through a high profile advertising blitz starring The Simpsons, Butterfinger BBs were marble sized nuggets of chocolate and peanut butter, presumably created to answer the question what if Butterfingers were more of a choking hazard? The candy had a good run, but was discontinued in 2006, at which point we assume Bart finally had that cow. Nobody likes a flat Dorito. That's apparently what the brand was thinking when Doritos 3D debuted in 1998. Likely created to compete with snacks like Bugles, this version of the popular tortilla chip was basically just a puffed up Dorito, like it had an allergic reaction to nacho cheese. It came in three flavors, including Zesty Ranch, Jalapeno Cheddar, and the old Doritos mainstay nacho cheese. The line was discontinued pretty much everywhere but Mexico in 2004. But if you're one of the people who just can't stand 2D Doritos, take heart. In 2021, the company brought the 3D version back in two flavors, chili cheese nacho and spicy ranch. Nestle's Bug Pops, popsicles with little gummy bugs in them, were created as a tie-in to the animated cartoon Timon and Pumbaa, which starred the characters from Disney's 1994 animated classic The Lion King, who were known to eat bugs. Despite looking for all the world like popsicles that had fallen under the refrigerator, the Bug Pops took off in 1995. They were available in cherry and grape, and each box typically included some Timon and Pumbaa training cards. Like the cartoon they were affiliated with, however, the product was relatively short-lived, disappearing from the shelves in 1997. 
Dropping in the mid-1990s, Sprinkle Spangles cereal from General Mills was star-shaped cereal covered in colorful sprinkles. Commercials for the product featured a purple genie character called Sprinkle Genie, who was voiced by Mel Brooks' mainstay, Dom DeLuise. The character would show up to grant the wishes of kids who wanted sprinkles on their cereal with the catchphrase, you wish it, I dish it, while the commercial itself bragged that the makers had spangled every angle with sprinkles. Despite all the rhymes, the brand was discontinued in 1998, never to be seen again. Sonic the Hedgehog made his debut on Sega Gaming Systems in 1991. By 1995, the character was famous enough to receive the highest award American culture has to offer, his own brand of canned spaghetti and meatballs. Sonic the Hedgehog pasta was manufactured by Franco-American, the maker of SpaghettiOs, who marketed the brand with a bizarre commercial that depicted a Robotnik-like kid plugging a can of pasta into his gaming system. Sonic himself would go on to fame and fortune in the movies, but his branded pasta hit the wall in 2000. So what do you think? Were you a 90s kid? And if so, were any of these treats among your favorites? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from Weird History.